What's up, people? It's Paperboy J, man, man, the voice of the plebs. And today, Young Rezzy hooking up with Game League to take League to the next level and make League great again. So let's get right into it. I'm a three time challenger Shen God. What does that mean? I live and die by staring at the mini map because I always want to know what's going on on the map every few seconds. I'm bouncing around from site to site trying to get better at League of Legends. Then I realize my search has finally ended because over at Game Leap, we create hundreds of guys from challenger players to help you take the right steps necessary to becoming the best version of you you can be. Part 2 of this macro guide is already available on the website, so go there. Click the link, man. I'll see y'all at the top. This is gonna be a crazy series that talks about macro. A lot of y'all like, what is macro? Well, let Mr. Macro explain it to you. Macro is a ton of things. When I look in the mirror every morning and I see these, that's macro. When I go to the gym and I don't waste too much time doing those little exercises, I only hit the bench press into the deadlift, that's macro. When you use in the bathroom, you gotta make sure everything is nice and clean when you're done. That's macro because you're paying attention to the map, which is your body. You pay attention to your mini map because it's the truth. In school, you go to class and you gotta pass certain tests. How do you study for the test? You look at your mini map, you look at your books, you understand the facts in the book. So when you go to the test, you're not thrown off by different things coming left and right. Why? Because you've seen them before and nothing can surprise you. Same thing applies in League. When you're in League of Legends, you look at your map every few seconds to understand what's going on so nothing can surprise you and you're always five steps ahead. That's macro. What are you going to learn at the end of this video? You're going to understand the value of a mini map and you're going to go into your next solo queue game looking at your map and understanding different information. Let me tell you this one thing. A lot of y'all don't drive, but some of y'all who drive will understand this analogy. When you in a driver's test, you got three mirrors. Bap, bap, bap. You understand? Three. In a driver's exam, you got to look at all three. Every five seconds. Why? Even if there's nothing going on, you don't even have to be turning. But the instructor wants you to understand where you are outside of the car. So you go bap, bap, bap. Bap, bap, bap. Every three seconds. I got my... Versace macros on and I could afford to look at this replay and teach this lesson with these on why cuz I'm three-time challenger We're gonna be looking at a Korean replay. So let's get right into the replay So right here I'm watching my boy Faker hide on bush Hide on bush. It wasn't even proper English, but he didn't even really care right now They're setting up a five point you're already looking at your mini map I'm not even looking at the real map, but I'm looking at the mini map and I'm understanding one entrance two entrance three entrance Four entrance. As you can see right there, a word came out and pings are coming out. These guys wouldn't have understood that if they weren't looking at their mini map and seeing vision pings coming out. That's the importance of looking at your mini map. And you'd be in top lane like twiddling your thumbs. You know what I mean? You would be faker right here, not understanding. But there was pings coming out here and here to tell the team and to feed them information that they need to know to secure the bag. To secure the bag, what does that mean? It means a win. So right now, we're looking at the game. We understand already that there was two pings coming out. Even if I'm Aatrox right here, I understand that this and this is warded. It's not really important, but from Aatrox's perspective, you know what that means? That means that if a jungle fight goes down early for the Scuttle Crab, he knows it's there. This ward might expire, but it's giving him information. Let's say, you know, Kane decides to do this red, then, then circle back into this blue. He could be looking at his map. Already pings are coming out in the mid lane that people are MIA. But we're looking at our mini map and hold up, hold up, hold up. Pause. Look at that. We're going to pause right there. We see that Kane has decided to start Raptors. It's standard on Kane. But on red side, it's not leashing. They showed in lane early. So as you can see, there's back pinks coming out from this side, from this team, telling them that, yo, these guys are here doing this because they haven't showed up in lane yet. As you can see, Sona and Tom Kench are still here clearing this red. And what does that mean? The red team, Zion and Jana, are telling the rest of their team, Chao Chu Shi Chu, I show you. Uh, hey, the bot lane is not here. That means they are deciding to start on the red buff. What does that mean? Those pings are coming out to notify the team. Danger, danger. This is where they're starting. And if you're gangplank Kane or Silas and you're not paying attention, you might miss this. But if you're looking at your Bible, if you're looking at your mini map, if you're looking at your mirrors, bah, 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 you would understand this. So as we can see, the Tom Kench and the Janna are going late to lane. That means they leashed for Karthus, who started at red and transitioned into the Gronk. This tells Gangplank that Karthus is starting red and can either go for a crab or invade the blue, 
or path towards topside. This tells Gangplank to be careful at three minutes. You guys watch Hashinshin, you've heard of Hashinshin, you know he dies to every level three gang because he doesn't look at his minimap and understand where the jungler is starting and how he can transition into the top lane. The Kane is clearing his Gromps right now as we speak. He already did his red and his rafters, so he's still topside. So Aatrox has to assume that Kane is in the area because he did not see a leash from the Zaya and the Janna. So he's transitioning towards top. Aatrox made a huge misplay by not looking at his map and playing safe because he should have already assumed that he shouldn't be pushing his wave. He was trying to push his wave, but he didn't understand that he's in trouble. He just got outskilled. Meanwhile, Kane's thinking, hmm, I'm already topside. Aatrox has no flash. Let me give him another gank. Why would you TP to this? You should already be assuming by looking at your minimap and driving your car and understanding that Kane is here and you could get ganked, but he has no vision. Therefore, he's going to die again. Now, right here, we're looking at a very interesting play. Silas goes ahead and wards this river. Pause. He wards this river to give him vision of the river. Why does he do this? To open the eyes and to remove the, the goggles, the Stevie Wonder goggles from his teammates eyes so that they can understand where Karthus is if he's swimming in the river. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, he wards aside potentially understanding where Karthus is. He has not seen Karthus yet, but he assumes that based on the horizontal clear that Heart Karthus is achieving, he's looking over, looking over, looking over. He says, oh, all these camps are gone. Karthus must be on this top side. His lane is shoved, which is why Kane did not help him and he helped top lane, but he's going back to lane but he cannot overextend. This is an extremely important point because he's looking at his mini map right now and thinking, why isn't my girlfriend home yet? His girlfriend is Karthus and she hasn't showed up yet because she's late. Therefore, she might be cheating. Okay, you understand that? Which is why he is not walking up to attack these minions because he does not know where his girlfriend is. A lot of low tier players who don't look at their map, who don't understand the science, he's looking at his map right now like this, like where's my girlfriend, where's my girlfriend? I don't see her, so I have to be safe. Which is why he's positioning in a safe region, okay? He sees Camille eat in. So he slides out. This was only possible because he is assuming that Karthus is here. He is assuming that Karthus is here. And now Karthus comes around, but he's safe because he hasn't overextended. He didn't hit those minions. So he's just going to slide out safe. He knows where his girlfriend is. His girlfriend is a cheater. Kane, as we already said, is farming up. He already found his lead at the top side. So now you're going to see something very, very interesting. Pings from the blue team to suggest that perhaps Kane is in this region. Pause. Now, analyze something. The blue team does not have this region warded. They do not know, they do not see, but they assume based on his movements, starting top side, going into the top lane region. Now he's gonna come to the bot side. They are using their pings and their mini map to alert everyone. Hey guys, we do not have this warded, but logically, where else could he be? So they are feeding this information to the Karthus. If I were to take an educated guess, he would be in the wolves region. I'm a wolf. Wolves understand macro because they don't eat vegetables. Camille, again, providing vision in the river, but Kane is going to sweep it. Again, this is minimap information. Therefore, the blue team is pinging the cane saying, guys, he's right here. Aatrox, you are safe even though you are bad and died twice in five minutes. Camille already knows that Kane is there, so she's hugging the left side tactically. This is a tactical hide from the boy Faker. Shou, 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 shou. You know what I mean? And this is what Fakers do. You know, Faker movement, he's backing off, he's spreading time. He provides the Aatrox an opportunity to die once again. So that's how Aatrox is using this information that Faker's providing to him. He's looking at the minimap saying, okay, Kane is mid. I got some time to be by myself. I'm just gonna die. Again, a guy with Stevie Wonder goggles on, not understanding how to use the map, just getting outskilled. When you understand the minimap and you use it as a science, you're able to invade the other team and use your lead to snowball the map. The red team has ample vision here looking at the minimap. They can assume that Karthus is here, which is allows Kane with his gangplank who is strong to play aggressively and to take control and take over. And he's looking at his minimap right now going fishing. He's like, where's the Karthus? I'm going, I'm looking. <laughs> He didn't find him, but he's here. He's on the side. He's diving top. This gives the Zaya 
and the Janna the opportunity to play even more aggressive and take more plates. Why? Because they looked at their minimap. They understood that Kane is utilizing his pressure to invade and to open his eyes and look for the Karthus and go fishing. Once the Karthus has been fished and reeled in, this allows the other sailors to eat fish. And what does that mean? They hit the turret. Attack! where Karthus is, let's play more aggressive. How could they do that? By looking at their mini-map. Why do people play Karthus? Karthus is all about global alts. What is that? That's called macro, macaroni, back to the point. You could do things without really being there. At this very moment, Karthus uses his alt because he sees that Jenna is low, but Karthus is over here. How could he have done that? By looking at what's around him, understanding the situation, and clicking the right button. Karthus is also looking at his Aatrox and sees that he's playing aggressively, so therefore he decides to back him up. Kane also being there allows him to support his dead Silas. But Karthus being there and seeing that his Aatrox is almost dead means that he's going to be in the right spot at the right time. So not only did Karthus make a play but previously from looking at his minimap, he was also able to support his feeder Aatrox, the North American Burger Eater, by at least being in the right spot at the right time. This allows Aatrox to leave the area safe and sound. Wow, that's macro. Man, I'm looking around trying to get better at League of Legends. Then I realize where I gotta go. Game Leap, where we create tons of in-depth guides by challenger players, organized into step-by-step -step courses, so people like you, the average Joes, can take the right steps to becoming the best version of you. Part two of this macro video is already up on our website, so make sure you click the link to get there, man. I'll see you all at the top.